Hi everybody, Shelley Tolman with discussion post number two. This week we're going to be looking at James Waddell. Waddell was born in North Carolina, which becomes pertinent later when he makes a decision to leave his position as an instructor at the United States Naval Academy and join the Confederate Navy as a Confederate armed merchant raider in 1862. So once he joined the Confederate Navy, uh, Waddell was put in charge of the Shenandoah, which was originally built in Scotland to be a commercial merchant ship. Um, initially, his first voyage, he set out and it was um, basically under the auspices of being a commercial voyage. Ultimately, Waddell and his crew were extremely successful at raiding, uh, taking down or ca capturing or destroying more than 39 ships. They estimate that he caused approximately $1.3 million in commerce interrupted for the Union. Um, and that is aside from the damage that was done to personal property um, and it one insurance company alone paid out over a million and a half dollars at the time for loss of personal property for different people um, who had insured their boats or their cargo through it, the Atlantic Mutual Company. So that is not taking into consideration any of the other insurance companies that may have covered some of the ships that Waddell was able to successfully overtake. Um, so that boils down to not only him being extremely successful, but him, he and his crew potentially making a substantial amount of money if they were able to keep even a percentage of the totals from the cargo, from the ships that they sold or that were ransomed, um, and then for potentially ransoming out some of the sailors or officers that they took uh, in the process of their raids as well. So Waddell and his crew were very good at raiding ships um, it's unknown if they were able to keep all or a percentage of what they were able to sell the cargo that they took um, for, as well as uh, what they ransomed the ships that they captured or sold the, the money that they got from selling those ships as well. So if they were able to keep all or part of that, uh, then they were making a significant amount of money. As you can see here, this is the Union Navy pay per month. Um, and it's unknown if the Confederacy was paying their Navy also at, on a monthly stipend as well. Um, the, U, the Union and Confederate armies were paid on par with each other. So if that was the case, then Waddell would have been making somewhere around this amount per month. Um, and that could have been standalone or it could have been in combination with the percentage of the profits from the rating that they did. So eventually Waddell and his crew were leaving Australia and continuing to raid uh, along their path and they encountered several crew that were telling them, hey, the war is over, it's ended. Um, and they refused to believe that until they had received something official. Um, so they continued to raid all along their route until they made it to the west coast of the United States. Um, and there they were finally proven um, by one of the, the crew of a ship like, hey, yes, the war is over, here's your proof. Um, and they realized that they really had been operating as pirates for the past several months. Um, and so they left and went back to Europe. Uh, they handed over the Shenandoah to the British government and kind of walked away. Um, later, several years later, uh, Waddell returned to the United States, to the West Coast specifically, where he was the captain of a ship for the Pacific Mail Company. 
Um, he was let go at one point when his ship ran aground and uh, his license was suspended for a year. Later, that was that decision was overturned, but we know he probably went several months without being paid. Um, he eventually left the West Coast going back to the East Coast to Annapolis, um, where he was the commander of a small police force. Um, so what that kind of tells us is that assuming Waddell was able to keep a percentage of uh, the profits from the booty that they gathered during the course of the war, his financial situation was actually at its peak um, during the war years and then began to taper off afterwards. Um, so for him, um, the war probably was very profitable. Um, ultimately, he passed away in 1886 in Annapolis from a brain tumor.